That's beautiful. 60 frames per second, 1080p. Smash Brothers Melee! And though the second controller is not working. Oh, that's rough, isn't it? I want to start this video by saying thank you to the developers working hard on this emulator. The fact the emulator is at this stage so short after release is a miracle and a fantastic achievement. And based off the state a 4 sx 2 was in before its development was stopped, I'm extremely excited about the future of this emulator. The speed of updates is also encouraging. It was released in December 2022 and it's already at 1.12 and has improved massively. I'm currently playing The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker on my Xbox Series S, which if you know anything about emulation is a huge achievement and brings us one step closer to having a console that can run all my favourite retro games. I'm going to show you how to install this emulator using dev mode, but before you do, you should know a few things. This emulator is in early development and it has a lot of bugs and glitches. Whilst I was making this video, I had a total of 8 crashes in 7 hours. The menu and UI looks amazing, but it can be slow and buggy. There's now graphics options and config menus, but it still doesn't have a control configuration menu, and there's a couple of hacks and tricks missing from the actual PC emulator. The GameCube controls are beautiful, but the Wii controls are missing motion controls, vital for Wii games, and a lot of games have stutter and frame rate drops. So before you install it, just know it's not a perfect experience, and you should expect issues. Despite all that, what I've seen from this emulator has me extremely excited for the future. I'm not I'm not a huge fan of RetroArch, I prefer standalone emulators, so the very fact this exists is a huge deal for me. I'm living in a foreign country and all my retro consoles are back home, so my Xbox is the only console I have with me. So whilst this emulator is not great, it's going to be amazing very soon. I'd only recommend playing GameCube games at the minute and familiarising yourself with the settings and menus. With all that being said, let's get into the tutorial. So let's take a look at how to install Dolphin onto our Xbox. First, open your Xbox into dev mode and in the bottom right corner, make a note of the bit where it says remote access. So this bit here, and we're gonna need that IP address. Then we're gonna go all the way back to our computer then you're going to click the link in the description down below and it'll take you to Sir Mangler's version of Dolphin Emulator for UWP. We're currently at 1.112, but by the time you probably watch this video, it may have been updated again. So just look for this green latest sticker here and it'll tell you all the changes that have been made. So click on Dolphin Emulator for UWP 1.12, scroll all the way down and to the bit where it says Assets and click on the App X and it'll download the App X to your device then open a new tab and type in the ip address for remote access to your xbox so mine was 192.168.0.104 colon 11443 and don't forget to put the https colon slash slash press enter and it's going to come up and warn you about potential security risk click advanced scroll down and click accept the risk and continue and this will be your xbox dashboard on the xbox dashboard where it says my games and apps click add Click Browse and find the application package, the AppX that we downloaded from GitHub. Click Next. There's no dependencies for this, so we just click Start and the installation process will start. Once it's done, click Done. And if you go to your Xbox, you'll notice that Dolphin Emulator has been installed. There it is there. And you can just start the emulator. Now, it did take a minute or two to load up the first time, and hopefully that'll get a lot quicker in the future. And this is our Dolphin dashboard. So we press the settings button. Here is where we can now mess around with a bunch of the settings. And if you've used Dolphin before, there are a lot of familiar faces. So I'm going to allow mismatch region settings. And I'm going to change disks automatically, something I always do. On the interface, I'm going to put show FPS. Because you know me, I love to see the FPS. And on the graphics section, we now have access to a bunch of things that are in the regular PC Android version of Dolphin. The resolution is automatically set to 1080p, which is beautiful. If you're having problems with a game stuttering, switch it down to native. Or if you want to test the true power of the Xbox, I'm using the Xbox Series S, but maybe the Xbox Series X can use 4K. You can change it to 4K and you can go all the way up to 5K, but I doubt you're going to get decent frame rate at 5K. Shader compilation is actually already set to hybrid Uber shaders and compile shaders before started has been clicked. A lot of this appears to have been automatically set up for us. Anti-aliasing is set to MSAA 
two times. If you're having problems with a game that's stuttering, just turn this off. Or if you want to test the boundaries of your Xbox Series S or Series X, then change this to two times, four times, or X. In the paths and folders section, this is where we're going to add the path for our games. So I'm going to click add path. Go to my external hard drive, click games. GameCube. ROMs. And then I'm going to go all the way down here. And click select. And that has added my ROMs. Set Dolphin user folder location. So this is going to set where all of the settings are stored. If you have the Durango FTP brick where your local state folder is blank, which is currently happened to this Xbox, and I'm not willing to factory reset it for the millionth time just to get that fixed. So I'm going to set Dolphin user folder location. I'm going to go onto my hard drive. I'm going to click games. I'm going to go to GameCube. And I'm going to make sure that it puts it into this folder here. Click select. Now I just wait. And I've got access to my controller back, so that must have completed. Then in the advanced section, I'm going to click prefetch custom texture packs because I like to use texture packs. I've said this many times and I like them to be fetched into the system RAM. If I'm having problems and it is going to stutter with these texture packs, then I'm going to turn that off. So to get out of the menus, press the menu button. And now, as you can see, all my games have been loaded into Dolphin. As you see, all my games have been loaded into Dolphin. And it is a bit slow in changing between the games at the minute. So I'm suggesting that you just put the games that you want to play onto this hard drive. Because if I press RB to move to the next section of games, it does take a couple of seconds to get to where I want it to go. And we're just going to test out Super Mario Sunshine. There's that classic Nintendo ding, which means the game's running. And to enter the in-game menu, we press the left trigger in and press the menu button. And I'll bring up the, the menu. I'm going to show FPS because I'm going to see what the FPS is. So internal resolution was set at 1080p. So currently in the in-game menu, there's a couple of things missing, but that's that's to be expected with a relatively new version of Dolphin. We can change the aspect ratio to 416 by 9, but there's no access to the widescreen hack, so you're going to have to use the but there's no access to the widescreen hack and there's no access currently to cheats and things like that. But hopefully that's something that's going to be implemented in the future. So I'm just going to keep it at 4x3 for now. Because there are a lot of glitches with 16x9 in Dolphin Emulator. So there it is. Mario is running around. There is a bit, little bit of slowdown. Oh, that's bad at the minute. More frame drops there. So the big test here is if the analog stick... No, the analog controls... are not there for it, which makes playing Super Mario Sunshine very, very difficult. Because one of the things, one of the things that you need to do in Super Mario Sunshine a lot is to hold down... Ah, hold down the right trigger just a slight bit so that the water comes out and you can run at the same time. Oh no, he's doing it now. But I've got it completely pressed down. So if I hold the trigger down completely, it does this. And then if I hold it... It was working then for a second. Nope, I can't get it working. Try my absolute hardest here to figure out if there is a sweet spot. To exit game, press the left thumbstick in and the menu button. And go down to a bit where it says exit game and exit the game. At the minute, there are currently no controller settings or controller configuration settings, which is a bit of a disappointment. There is currently a way to emulate a broadband adapter, which is interesting, which means there's currently an option for possible online play. So hopefully by the time this video comes out, there'll be a controller configuration here. Like I said, this is currently new and it's constantly being updated. So a lot of this might be different when you play the game, but the basic premise will always be the same. Smash Brothers Melee! And though the second controller is not working, there is no second controller registered. We can't have two player. Let's just test the game out then. Oh, that's rough, isn't it? I wonder what's happening there. It's 
stage always like this? I don't think it is. Oh. I mean, it runs smooth. We're getting 60 at the moment, but it's just casual drops that you normally get. In case that wasn't wasn't the smoothest of experiences, but still, so impressive that they can do this on the Xbox. And the Holly Handle Shake. Oh no, there's no buttons assigned for Shake. Nope, it just doesn't work. I even just tried shaking my Xbox controller. Am I f missing a, like a controller? No, there's no controller settings. That's such a shame. I actually can't go any further in the game without shaking. Oh, I can do a ground pound. How did I do that? Well, right trigger's ground pound. Almost like in 1080p. Let's just test 1080p while we're here. So much cleaner. It actually runs 1080p 60. So I f might be shader compilation. Just causing the stutters then. So that's beautiful. 60 frames per second, 1080p. I cannot wait for them to uh, fix this. I can't go any further because I can't shake. Just have to exit the game.